Hey you guys, welcome back to another video. So if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button and the bell notification so every time I upload, you get notified. So this is so much information, you guys. This surgery, I underestimated this surgery, you guys. Like, I don't even, like, I don't know, like, what I was expecting, but it was nothing that I'm going through that I was expecting. Like, I promise you, everything I'm going through, I did not expect it. I thought this was about to be a walk in the park. I thought this was nothing compared to Lipo, but if I'm being honest with y'all, Lipo ain't got nothing on this. If I knew some things I knew now, I don't know if I wouldn't have done the surgery, but I probably would have been a lot more prepared, like, mentally this surgery is like more of a okay i need to stop doing this okay let's go back so this surgery is more of a mind over matter throughout the whole process it's like it's definitely mind over matter that's like the first piece of advice i can give you if you are thinking about the surgery you need to prepare yourself more mentally than anything because the physical part is very minimal and very temporary it's the mental part that is harder this is more for family friends kind of because uh i find myself dealing with this just about every surgery I go to, um, I'm going, I end up going through, like, where everybody's like, oh, no, you don't need it, oh, like, what if this, oh, like, it's just so much, and I know it's not to be negative, I get that it's not to be negative, um, people are just concerned or anything, but what I am going to say is, if I already put my money down, and if I already set my mind on having this surgery, and if I'm already packing and on my way to go, Nobody wants to hear none of that. I just want support. Like, nobody wants to hear, like, oh, you don't need it. Like, I've already put my money down. I'm already on my way. Like, mentally, I'm already there. So, I don't need to hear that I don't need the surgery. I don't need to hear the, um, all the bad things that could go wrong. It's just unwanted, unnecessary, and it's just doesn't feel good. Like, and I'm speaking, like, from my perspective. It just doesn't feel good when you go into surgery and everybody is filling your head with all the other stuff and you're trying to stay positive yourself. So, family, friends, just no negativity. There's no, nothing that is not 100% positive. You don't want to hear it. So, I had a mini gastric sleeve and mine was considered mini because I took out only 60% of my stomach. So, if you don't know what a gastric sleeve is, it's when you cut out a portion of your stomach. Um, it's a little more complex than that, but yeah, that's the gist of it. You're cutting out a portion of your stomach. I went to Mexico, Tijuana, Tijuana, Mexico. My doctor was Dr. Christian Rodriguez. It was amazing. My surgery was September 27th. So as of tomorrow, I will be three weeks post-op. And I'm so excited because I can't wait. I really can't wait till I'm like three months out, honestly, you guys. I'm like ready to zoom past. Like, these three weeks, I feel like took forever. But at the same time, it feel like it didn't. Like, oh, terrible, you guys. Um, so I paid $4,500 for the surgery. And that included the medication, my hotel stay the first night I got there, the two night stay in the hospital, um, my EKG, my um, lab work, that included pretty much everything. All I ended up paying for was my flight. So, and I ended up staying an extra night in Tijuana because there was a storm in Florida, if you guys know. So my flight got delayed, but also I needed the extra night. So I took it because it was just, yeah, we're going to get to there. So the deposit was $500. Oh, the only other thing I did spend money on was a COVID test before I went. Um, you have to take it three days before you get there. You can't take it any further out than three days. Um, but that was the only other extra money I spent. But, you know, it wasn't bad. If you know somebody in insurance, sometimes your insurance will cover the COVID test or whatnot. But that was the only extra money I spent. 
I also had to wait four to six months um, before I got this surgery considering I just had lipo. So if you are somebody that had lipo that is interested in getting this surgery, um, you do have to wait about four to six months before you can. I wanted to lose weight and I wanted to lose weight because of, um, even as much as I get surgery, um, lipo, as much as I've gotten lipo, lipo can't get to a certain layer of fat which is called your visceral fat and it just can't get to it and the only way is weight loss. Yes, I go to the gym, but I still find it hard to lose weight. So two weeks before I went into surgery, the nutritionist called me to let me know that it was time for me to go on a low carb diet. The point of the low carb diet is so that your liver will shrink. So um, the way they're explaining to me is so that during surgery, your liver doesn't fall on your stomach. It makes it easier for the doctor to get to your stomach and that's the point of the low carb diet so unfortunately for me i had to start everything early because my tonsils had swollen up so my experience is just a little different than you guys so five days before surgery i'm gonna go on a clear liquid diet which is just like plain liquid so like if you want apple juice they tell you get like sugar free or low sugar Basically, you want to not really be intaking sugar, but clear liquids. So like I would have apple juice and I would have water. So for me, before the surgery, I lost, hmm, I lost a total of 15 pounds before surgery. Let me do the math on that. Yeah. And again, that's because I had to start early because my tonsils were swollen. So by the time my tonsils were fine, it was time to be on the clear water diet, so I kind of lost a little more weight before. So as far as packing goes, um, I actually packed pretty light because what I knew was clearly I wasn't going to be like wanting to dress anything tight or anything like that. So I threw on, I packed like three dress gowns, um, I packed a towel um and just like really like little stuff i didn't pack much of like things that i need obviously my hair stuff i packed um toiletry things that i was gonna need like brought my toothbrush or stuff like that but i really didn't pack much i packed everything to keep me comfortable because i knew i was gonna be in the hospital for two nights so it's just like what was i really gonna be doing i wasn't gonna be getting dressed so as far as packing i would pack pretty light so my flight was so early in the morning because they asked you to get there by about 12 in the afternoon. So I made sure I booked the early flight. I got on my flight at like 5 in the morning or something like that. So I left my house at like 4. Um, and the flight was about 6.5 hours total travel. And that's because I had to stop in Atlanta. I had to do a connecting flight. There was no direct flight. So um, that's how I got there. Once I landed, I landed in San Diego. So when you land in San Diego, there's a driver. They tell you you can fly to Tijuana, but most people, if you're from the US, you're gonna fly to San Diego and the driver will pick you up. They was there for me. They picked me up, we passed the border. So when you're going through the border, you don't need to show your passport. It's up when you're coming back to the border. So um, once I got there, my daughter picked me up. We went to we went to the facility, and I took my I did my lab work. So, but everything was so fast. I did the urine test. I did the EKG, um, and um, they took some blood, and that was just it. So it was quick, fast, easy. From there, a driver took me to the hotel. My hotel was in Tijuana, so that hotel was paid for. It was so nice. So while I was there, I had the whole day. It was like 11 in the afternoon. I had the whole day, so I actually went and got a massage and relaxed before my surgery because I wanted to be so relaxed. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. If I'm going to rate the spa at the hotel, as far as massage-wise goes, I'm going to get a bit like a 2 out of 5. And that was because the spa was nice. The massage was basura. Okay? But this is so important for me to tell you guys because I was so hungry, you guys. I hadn't eaten any food in over a week. So I was so hungry the night before. And you can't have literally nothing. Like, you have to have... They allowed chicken broth. You can have chicken broth, water, and jello. Like, that's what you can have before the surgery. The hotel is aware of your surgery, so they give you a wristband, and the kitchen knows to only serve you those things. So, you can't even cheat out of it if you want to. 
So um, I was so hungry that I was ready to push my surgery back because I just wanted to eat so bad. So I couldn't wait to sleep and get up and get the surgery. So the morning of the surgery, I finally met the doctor um, and I told him like, you know, like, so typically I know a few people that have had this surgery. Most people have had the full one and they've lost about 80 pounds. And I didn't, I wasn't looking to lose that much weight. I feel like that was just too dramatic for me. And that's just not the look I want. So I told him like, you know, how much weight I'm looking to lose. So we talked and he explained to me that he doesn't know the size of someone's stomach until he goes in. So that some people have bigger stomachs, some people have regular stomachs, some people have small stomachs. So we talked about it and um, I let him know that, you know, if my stomach was bigger, take out 70%. But if I have a regular stomach, just take out 60% because I didn't want to lose extreme weight. So um, you can definitely talk to your doctor and he would definitely like, you know, recommend and tell you what he thinks. My doctor was fine with what I wanted, so we went for that. So everything was great. I want to tell you guys how great this facility is. So I've been to DR, I've been to Columbia, and I've been to Miami. Those are the three places I've had surgery at. So this was the fourth place I've ever had surgery, which was in Mexico, Tijuana, right? And out of every facility I've ever, ever been to, this by far to me was the best. When I tell you the nurses were so attentive, I'm talking before surgery, after surgery, everything smelled so good there. And I'm like, it was like not a, a food smell, it was a cleanly smell. Like, and it wasn't overpowering, it was just, like I just couldn't believe it. Like I don't even know how to explain it to you guys. But it smells so good there. It was so nice there. And like I said, even before and after surgery, the nurses were beyond attentive. Like I've been to facilities where like you're calling for help and they'll be just be like conversating. You just have to like keep pressing a button until someone comes. Because after surgery typically you can't walk like or it's just hard for you to get up not even that you can't walk it's hard for you to get up to walk so you typically need help getting out of the bed and like i said i've been to even recovery houses like that where like they're just not attentive to you and i did not have this experience at all like i can't even explain to you so this is like that was the bright side of this surgery was the service, the best side manner was amazing. Now when I woke up, so I remember them waking me up and when they were waking me up, I was just like, I don't know, I remember like looking around and like I was going in and out cause I was still like coming off of the um, anesthesia. And when I finally woke up, I don't know about everybody else because when I talk to other people, I've heard, Oh, it's discomfort. I don't know if it's that people forget the pain or what, but the first three to four days, we're going to say three to five days, there is pain. It was painful. It wasn't just uncomfortable. Like after the five days, there's no more pain. It's more of a discomfort. But before then, the first five days, it was painful and it wasn't unbearable like the first day might have been a little bit unbearable painful but it was more painful for me because okay so this is not everybody's experience because like i said i know at least three to four people that have gotten a surgery and um only one of them have the same experience as me so i was throwing up blood for like the first 12 hours like I, every time I ate, so they was giving you ice chips because that was like the most you could have. And I was just throwing up blood, like just uncontrollably. So even like the first time they asked me to get up to walk, I got up and I started crying because it was just so painful. I'm like, no, I can't do it. I ran back to the bed. Like I literally ran back to the bed because I just was like, no, I'm not walking. But walking is definitely what helps because after a little while, like I took another nap, like 
I will sleep for, and this happens to me after every surgery. I only sleep for like 45 minutes to an hour at a time and then I'm up again. And this happened for like the first night. Um, I was hooked up to an IV, so I was getting liquid through that way. And um, for the first two days, I was the whole two days I was in the hospital, I was hooked up. Um, but yeah, walking definitely ended up helping. I walked as much as I could um, throughout the night. But the first 12 hours, you guys, like I said, this is not everybody's experience, but for me, the first 12 hours was hell. Like, it was crazy. Like, it was just too crazy for me. So, I was really, like, ready to be, like, reverse this. Like, I could, I had never thrown up blood like that, and the way I was throwing up, and this is why I couldn't film, you guys. So, I did get one fit footage after the surgery, and that was, like, I think this was, like, day two. And I was feeling a little better, um, but I had my up and down moments. Even till t today, I have my up and down moments. And um, I'll tell you guys why for right now I'm having up and down moments still. But yeah, the first 12 hours, I hope that you guys don't go through that. But if you do, it's very temporary and you'll get past it. And... Yeah, you guys, that was very traumatic for me for that part. Yeah, it was so bad that one of the doctors, because it was a, uh, I think there was about two or three doctors I seen besides, um, no, besides Dr. Rodriguez, there was one other doctor I seen, um, and she was so sweet. She came and checked on me from the first day, um, and so the second day I was there, she went and brought me a heating pad and i just love her for that like she let me take it home and everything and i'm still using it till this day okay so um she brought me a heating pad because she figured like that might help like the swelling and just the pain and that was just so sweet and i just like when i tell you i love this facility like i recommend this like i know a lot of people are like oh like mexico no I don't think I could have got a better experience in the States. I don't think, and then I'm saying I don't think everybody will have different experiences depending on where you go. But for not being from there and or not like know like knowing these people and having a personal connection for them, to, to them, the service was great. Even my nurse, my nurse was with me from the first day. He's the one that did my lab. Um, my, my nurse came to my hotel room the last night to deliver my medication. He was there as much as he could be too. So um, the nurse you get, he will be there with you for majority of the way. And he was amazing. He was amazing. My nurse name was Jose. He was amazing. Like literally. Okay. Back to the surgery. I know I might be a little all over the place, you guys, but I want to make sure I get, tell you guys everything. So if I remember, I'm telling you guys. So, uh, after the surgery, the first five days, you're still on this clear liquid diet. So you can have like the water. Um, I wanted apple juice, so they diluted it with some water for me. Um, I literally like still couldn't eat, couldn't drink. Like I was taking the tiniest sips. What was saving me was being on that IV that was hydrating me. Um, they was giving me pain medication and the antibiotics through the IV, and that was great. When I got off the IV, I thought I was okay. When I got to the hotel, I was it was just back to no good for me. Like it was being taken off the IV, so I didn't realize how great the IV was doing because the pain came back. So by day two, when I woke up, the pain was like you know real real minimal, it wasn't nothing. But the third day when I had to leave the hospital and they took me off the ID, IV, I was like, oh my God, like I was dying. But they ended up bringing me pain medication and everything and I made it through, y'all. Coming back home was crazy. The plane ride home, if I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it wasn't crazy. Like I know you typically, like if you have lipo to get on a plane like three, four days after, I don't know, to me that's excruciating. Like I, I can't, I literally can't. But this wasn't bad to get home. I just wanted to be get home so I could lay down in my bed. But the flight was not bad. Like it didn't feel crazy to be on a plane. So when I got home, so walking is still very important throughout the first five days. You obviously, let me tell you guys, stick to the diet. Stick to the diet. Let me tell you. 
So there's this thing called dumping syndrome, right? It's a side effect of the surgery if you don't stick to the diet. So by day, I wanna say I did this like day seven. And I don't know who I thought I was. Like, who do I think I was? Just doing my own thing. So, um, anyways, so day seven, I just wanted to eat something. It wasn't hunger, it was just me being greedy oh, and wanting some food guys, because I, I just you wanted food. How much right? So I, I thought eggs can't be bad. Like, let me have some eggs. I made those, I made one egg, literally one, and I scrambled it, everything. When I tell you I ate it and it came right out. So that's what dumping syndrome is. And it ain't come out through my mouth, you guys. So, so that's what dumping syndrome is. It's when you eat it, it goes straight into, past your stomach into the small intestines, if I'm not mistaken, and it comes right out. And when I tell y'all, it's painful it was painful and i learned my lesson and i was like forget it i'm not eating nothing else and i couldn't even finish eating the eggs anyways like it was so hard to finish i couldn't even finish them and i was just off one egg so that scared me straight i was like nope no more food for me so you're supposed to have protein shakes so the first five days you're still on a clear water diet and then um so you're gonna get a nutrition book this is your bariatric nutrition guide. So it gives you the phases. I'm currently in phase three. I can't wait to get out of phase three. There's five phases. So I'm in phase three. I can't wait to get out because I'm going to two more phases before I can be me again. So phase one is five days. That's a clear water diet. Phase two is 12 days, which is full liquid. So um, you can have things like, um, what do they recommend? Oh, so this is where you can start your protein shakes. So if you're in phase one, you're having like chicken broth, you're having water, you're having maybe diluted apple juice, you're having that kind of stuff. And when you hit phase two, you'll be in full liquid. So this is when you're supposed to be having your protein shakes. This is where I ran into a problem. So. I've done tried protein shakes, chocolate, vanilla. I'm trying to try something else. I don't know. I didn't even try to make a smoothie with it. I don't like protein shakes. I literally don't. And you need protein because like literally you're not getting any protein from anything else. So I've been trying to supplement it with stuff like orange juice has a little bit of protein in it. So I've been trying to have that. I've been trying to find things to eat with it that has protein because literally i just don't like the way protein shakes taste i don't it's, and it's not even the initial taste it's the little aftertaste it gives you like i don't know if you guys ever had a protein shake and you know what i'm talking about and if you like it you like it but me i just am having a hard time because i cannot get with the protein shakes i don't like them i just don't like them there's nothing no i tried the chocolate one and it's i could take a little few sips but not enough like I'm supposed to. So they asked me to have 60 grams of protein. So from the protein shakes I've been having, that would mean I'd have to drink two. I haven't been able to even finish one. So that's my problem right now. Obviously you need to stay hydrated, a lot of water. Um, I've been trying to drink a lot of water, but you can't even drink how you would normally drink. Everything is like tiny sips. But as you go on, the sips can get bigger because by now I'm, in, I'm about three weeks and i'm not taking tiny tiny sips like i was before i'm able to take a little more bigger sips but still tiny sips nothing crazy definitely not out of a straw it's something about the air when it's coming up just doesn't feel good neither um so phase two is 12 days so now phase three which i'm in is 10 days and I have like four days left. Um, and in phase um, three, you're still supposed to be having um, your protein shakes for the protein. Um, you're supposed to search your vitamins. I brought this vitamin recommended by Surgeon Maid and it's called, okay. It's called Mary Ruth Liquid Morning Multivitamin. So let me see. Can you guys see that? So that's it right there. 
I thought since it said raspberry on it that it was gonna be bomb. So I got it. It was about $31, $32. I got it from a vitamin shop. And I opened it. I just wanted to throw up. When I opened it, when I took it, I feel like it smelled up my whole house. It was just disgusting. So save yourself, don't smell it. Just don't smell it. You're not gonna like it. It's just nothing about it to like. So what I did was I make strawberry banana smoothies all you need is two tablespoons of it. So I put it in the smoothie and I don't taste it. So yeah, phase three is the puree diet. So this is when you can start eating like mashed up stuff. So everything is still supposed to be extremely, extremely, extremely soft. I can't wait to get into phase four. Phase four is for 15 days and it's just soft food. Um, so I'm gonna, I can't speak too much on it because I haven't gone through it yet. Um, but yeah, I'm close to phase four, you guys. So excited. <laughs> so like phase one was five days, phase two was 12 days, phase three is 10 days. So that is almost, let's see, that's 10, that's 22, 27 days. So that's almost a month. So I'm ready to get a phase four. I'm ready to eat some food. Um, but do I regret this surgery? I have my moments. So I wanted to give you guys a breakdown of the weight loss every week. Um, I took my weight today for you guys too. So I can give you guys almost three weeks post-op. I'll probably be like a pound or two down tomorrow. So we're going to go through each of my weights, you guys. I am not happy to, I never like telling my weight. I never like telling my weight because, um, I don't know, I just don't like the number. And it's, and it's like, I'll, I can still be okay with the way I look, but the number just drives me crazy. So my starting weight when I first, first before I even started the, the um, two week low carb diet, I was at 234. Okay, so the day of surgery, I was 217. One week after surgery, I was 206, so I was 11 pounds down. Um, week two, I was 203, so I was only three pounds down, and but that was in a week. And today, I checked my weight, and I was 200, so tomorrow is going to be my official three weeks. So maybe I'll be at 199. Um, so I'm definitely documenting it, you guys. So you guys will definitely be able to keep up with me. Oh, that was something else I forgot to tell you guys. You see, I have to remember to tell you guys everything. Um, the doctor assistant wrote me about two weeks out, just checking on me, seeing how I was doing, if I had any questions, if anything was going wrong. And I love that. Like, I didn't even have to reach out to them. They reached out to me. Um, but I had no issues. But I was just happy to see that they still were checking on me even though like i was out and done with the surgery so when i tell you they're amazing they're amazing and um my intention is to guys to give you guys an update not too frequent because i don't want to overload you guys with um the surgery content but um i do want to give you guys updates i'm definitely gonna still keep track of everything so when i do update you guys at three months which is pretty far out um you guys will be able to see um you guys still know my progress within that time at one month at two months and you guys will get an update at three months my intention is to give you guys a three month update possibly a six months and a one year after that, maybe a two year. I've seen things about this surgery, but there's certain things I just didn't see people say that. I feel like, dang, like I wish I knew that. I wish I knew this and I wish I knew this. I wanna know if there's anything else I should tell you guys. Um, I'm still hoping to lose about 30 more pounds. Um, and so I'm right now I'm down 34 total from, very, from the very, very beginning. Um, and from since surgery, I'm down 17. So within three weeks, I'm down 17 pounds. That's about it, you guys. I hope you guys enjoy this information. I hope I answered questions that you guys probably had about this surgery. Um, and if you do still have questions, leave a comment. Uh, again, thank you for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. If you do it best, you got me like it.